Hi guys, um, welcome back again. My name is Steve. I'm here with uh, Fitness HQ. Uh, now, before we get started in today's session, uh, I just want to go over a few things that um, you, I want you to have a go at in your own time. Now, in your level three personal trainer manuals, um, I really recommend you go in and I start looking at the different muscles. Uh, and what I've done is I've put up uh, a, a list of the, the key major muscles um, uh, that, you, that you'll find in your textbooks. Uh, and what I want to have a look at is the breakdown of these muscles uh, in terms of where they are as well. So uh, what, what are they, where are they going from and to? Uh, and also, it's a case of looking at a few newer muscles as well that we may not have mentioned in level two. Um, so here's your main list. Feel, don't, don't feel like you need to um, skip out on the others as well. Uh, keep having a look at all the other major muscle groups. Uh, what you find is these are the key ones uh, that the that your exams tend to go into um, when you get to that point. Now, also, um, if, you're, if you're not yet comfortable with the muscular system, um, I suggest that you go back and have a quick recap over the level two session that we did, uh, just to re-familiarize yourself with things like the sliding filament theory, uh, how the muscle is working, how it links with the nervous system, things like that. Uh, if you're ready to go, we're gonna get cracking on with, this, with the lesson. Okay guys, so we're going to resume back at the uh, force generation and sliding filament theory again. Now like I said before, if you're not 100% familiar with this, by all means go back to the level 2 unit. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a recap. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go into a little bit more depth. Uh, we're going to use the diagram that I did before and we're going to add a few more things to it now. So as you can see from here, we've got the actin and myosin. Um, we, we now know that they, they slide over each other to create the sliding filament theory. Um, as you can see here, this is pointing out each sarcomere, uh, and this will happen throughout the whole muscle as well. Um, so really what I want to get into is uh, what actually happens. So uh, what, we, what we tend to find is that uh, down here, uh, now before your myosin heads can actually attach onto the actin, uh, the actin actually has a little binding site here. So it's, it's where the little heads of the myosin attach to. Now, um, imagine your, your actin filaments as like the entrance to a club or to a, a bar, yeah? Uh, and imagine yourself as the, the myosin, the myosin head. Now, at the bar, there's a, there's a bouncer. There's two bouncers in this case. So we've got bouncer number one, and we've got bouncer number two standing either side, and they're basically saying, you're not coming in. Um, now these are two chemicals that we have that, that float around in the muscle. Uh, one of them is called troponin, and the other one is called tropomyosin. Uh, and they basically, they're not letting us in. Um, basically what they want to do is they want to see us smarten up and they want us to get our ID out because I'm a little bit baby faced, they don't believe that I'm old enough to get in. Uh, now, in, in the body's particular case, we use calcium. Um, now, that's, that's what's going to get us into this, this club, basically. Now, if you look at the muscles up here from our previous diagram, what you'll see surrounding the muscle fibers is like a network of, of like, almost like netting that surrounds the fibers. Uh, it's like tubing, you could say. Uh, and we call this the sarcoplasmic reticulum. I'll get that up on the board for you in a second. Um, I'm sorry, up on the board. Uh, so the sarcoplasmic reticulum, or the SR uh, for short. Now the sarcoplasmic reticulum is responsible for storing calcium within the muscle. Uh, and what it does is, uh, once an action potential from the nervous system is sent to the muscle, uh, the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases the calcium. Uh, and what the calcium does is it goes from that little net webbing, it goes over here, and it basically just pushes the bouncers out of the way. So we give the bouncers our ID, they're happy um, and they're, they're going to allow us to go in. But at the moment, I've got no energy. So I've got through the door, uh, but you know, I've got no energy at this point. I need to go and get an energy drink. Now, in this case, going back to level two energy systems, this is where our ATP comes along. So we've got ATP, it comes along. So you can almost say that's like the energy drink that we're going to get from the bar. Now, what the ATP does, what this energy does, it allows us to go in and it allows us to pull. Yeah. So what happens is the ATP gives the myosin head its energy and the myosin head will twist and it will pull in and then get the actin to pull in together. Uh, and that's essentially how the molecules work. So it's a little bit more in depth, 
Uh, there's a few more new words for you there, but it gives you a good understanding of what's actually happening. Now, you might ask, well, why do I need to know this for being a personal trainer? Uh, well, the really good thing is, we've, one of the things to look at really is calcium. Um, now, it, it can come down to diet, it can come down to uh, poor hormone balance. Uh, if you've not got calcium being sent to the muscle and sent to these filaments, you, you don't have muscle contraction, essentially. So your, your force generation is going to be massively depleted. So if you're ever in the gym and you feel like you can't, you can't train as hard as you normally do, you've got to ask yourself, is there a calcium deficiency? That could be one reason why something like this might come in handy for you. And again, really good in terms of questions that might come up on exams as well. Now, what I've just said um, is, is sort of put down in the next couple of slides. So you, you can have a look through this slide. Uh, you can have a look through the actual release of calcium as well. Um, now, this goes into a little bit more detail about the neurotransmitter. So, uh, if, we, if we say we've got the end of a nerve, like so, and then we've got all of our muscle fibres here, Now remember from the nervous system what happens is we get an electrical stimulus that comes via the axon terminal or via the axon to this little terminal here. Now this little terminal is where we store little neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitter, um, once that electrical signal gets there, it's almost like the plane at a terminal, yeah? So you walk, you walk through the terminal, you get to the end, you get on the plane and then the plane sort of takes off. In this case, the neurotransmitter passes over the junction and it goes into the muscle fiber. Now, that essentially is what causes the calcium to be released. So it's this, this action potential phase here, as you can see from the diagram, you've got your neurotransmitters, they pass over what we call the synaptic cleft um, into the fibers themselves, and that's what allows us to get calcium. Now, we put that into a bit of a, a process uh, we've got our ATP down here. Uh, the action potential arrives at that neuromuscular junction here. Um, now the actual neuro, uh, the neurotransmitter itself is a chemical called acetylcholine or ACH for short. Uh, and that's what, it's a chemical that passes over. Now the reason it's a chemical is because if electric passed over, you're going to electrocute your muscles. So it has to become a chemical at this point. Uh, this causes sodium in the, in the, to be released into the muscle fibre. Now, because sodium is a positive charge, it depolarises the muscle itself. Uh, that depolarisation uh, then causes the release of calcium from the SR. Um, that activates the myosin uh, head through with the ATP, and as a result from this, um, it creates the, the pull of the muscle or the sliding filament theory. So uh, it's a bit of a breakdown. I know there's a lot to learn there. So if you feel like you need to go back, re, you know, recover some of these new words, by all means do so. Uh, it's quite a difficult topic to get your head around. Uh, that is essentially the more in-depth version of the sliding filament theory. Uh, now controlling of muscles. Um, going back to uh, motor units again. So. Uh, as it says here, the, the contraction uh, originates from a nerve impulse and the force of the contraction will depend on the, the sort of amount of the force that we need. Um, and the, there's two main things we need to look at really. The motor unit recruitment, uh, which we've covered, and then the new topic here on proprioceptor activity as well. Um, going back to the all or nothing law, uh, again a bit of a recap here. So, if a motor unit is fired up, that neuron and all of its fibres will innovate um, to create a force. Uh, it'll either be on or it'll be off. Again, if you want any more um, information on this, please go back to our um, level 2 um, nervous system unit and you'll find out a little bit more about the motor units themselves. Um, in terms of coordination, then we've got two different types of proprioceptors. Now I'm going to go back to the muscle here to go through this one with you. Uh, the first one we'll look at then is the muscle spindles. So it's a bit of a close to where they are in the muscle. Uh, and if you think the muscle fibres run along here like this, the muscle spindle is essentially a little spring or coil that wraps around the fibre. So you can imagine as the muscle lengthens, the little spring or the coil lengthens with the muscle. 
So let's say if I was going to go down and touch my toes, as my hamstrings tend to lengthen, the, the coil will lengthen with it as well. And then that is basically going to send all these little messages back up to the brain and it's going to tell me how far the muscle is stretching. Now if I get to a certain point where the muscle is stretching quite a lot, these receptors are going to send signals to the brain saying, whoa, hang on a minute, like this muscle is going a little bit too far here. And as a result, the, the brain will then fire up the muscle and it will contract it so that I can't go any further. So when you get to that sticking phase of a stretch, for example, that is the muscle spindles relaying information back to your brain, contracting the muscle so you can't go further and potentially tear your muscle fibres. Um, now, these are really good in what we call the stretch reflex. Uh, this is whereby a muscle lengthens, um, and when it lengthens, um, uh, especially if it's lengthening at a quick speed, uh, the, the brain will quickly send a response to contract the muscle. Now, a really good example is the, the knee and the hammer one, where it, it pings your knee forwards. So when the, the, the muscle or tendon rapidly lengthens, and as a result, you get a kickback from it. So we call that the, the stretch reflex, which is very much associated with the muscle spindles. Uh, now, the Golgi tendon organ is slightly different. Uh, clue as to where it is, it's in the tendon. So it's in this particular part of the muscle now. And the, the little sections of the tendon, and they detect how much tension is going through the tendon. So uh, let's go back to the bench press example where someone's got too much weight on, they go down and this, this Golgi tendon organ, or GTO for short, is relaying that information back to the brain. Now, if it feels like the tendon's at risk of getting damaged, what happens is that it, the brain will then just shut off the fibres that it's associated with. As a result, the bar comes down and it stops on your chest like so. Um, so as the muscle lengthens and the tension increases, it actually switches off. And we call this the inverse stretch reflex. Uh, so they're quite opposite. Both of them have a major job in making sure that our muscles stay healthy, that we don't tear them, that we don't overexert them. Now, in some cases, in like a sporting event, for example, um, the the rush of adrenaline, the competitive nature um, of, of these events, will actually inhibit these a little bit. So what can happen sometimes is you can you can actually overdo it a little bit, and that's when you can pull a muscle, tear a muscle, etc. So what I just mentioned there, um, it's kind of covered here, so if you want to have a look through uh, this little section here, you can do, so this goes through your, your stretch reflex. Uh, and then we've got the gorgon tendon organs, again here, so you can go through the inverse stretch reflex there. Um, Adaptations then, so uh, a key word here, reciprocal inhibition. Um, now, what this is relating to is uh, a muscle's ability to relax. Um, now, if we go back to level two skeletal system, um, where you've got an opposing muscle, an antagonist muscle, uh, it needs to relax in order to allow the, ma the main muscle to do its movement. Um, and it's a necessary part of any sort of movement, really. Um, and what your proprioceptors will do is they will make sure that your, your opposite muscles have the ability to lengthen and relax uh, when performing certain exercises. So like I said, if it's bench press, uh, it's your upper back muscles in particular. Um, and again, there's a, there's a little bit there about um, doing things like plyometrics whereby you, you, you do an explosive movement where you, you, say you do a box jump for example, uh, can really help with this process. Um, myoglobin then, this is, if you think haemoglobin is what carries oxygen in the blood, myoglobin is what carries oxygen in the muscle, myo for muscle. Um, it has oxygen bound to it, um, it basically is what transports oxygen to the mitochondria within the muscle, the mitochondria then uses the oxygen. Uh, again a quick recap here, we've covered this already in level 2, so if, again if you're struggling with this bit feel free to go back to the level 2 unit here and cover the fast and slow twitch fibres. Um, you'll find this graph again uh, in the level 2 unit, so I'm not going to give you too much information on this uh, as we've covered this already. Um, and that pretty much brings us up to the end of muscles. The last, the last thing I really want to mention is 
um, going through axes of movement. We've, we've mentioned planes of motion already. What I want to cover is the different axes. Now, they link up with the planes of motion. Uh, so there's, there's three individual ones. We've got uh, anterior to posterior. We've got medial to lateral. And we've got longitudinal. So all of your muscles will work in one of these axes. And like I said, they link up with the planes of motion. The way I like to think about axes of motion is through using a simple pen. So we understand what a lot of these words mean now. So anterior to posterior means front to back. So imagine if I get this pen and I stick it straight from my shoulder, from front to back. Now, if I twist the pen, what's going to happen to my arm? It's going to go out to the side, like so. So if I twist the pen, it's going to produce that sort of movement. So it's going to link in with the frontal plane. Yeah, so it's going to be lateral movements that I get out of it. Uh, so if you think the pen's going through there, you should be able to see that. You can practice yourselves as well if you've got a pen handy. Uh, if I was to put it through here, it would do that. So it's going to link in with frontal plane movement. So you can think of like a cartwheel firework, how it sort of spins around on its axis. Uh, the medial lateral then, medial means middle, lateral we now know means side. So imagine you've got a pen running from the middle to the outside, like so. Great example for this one, table football player, yeah. As you twist the handles, it sends you forwards and backwards like so, yeah. So this is going to link in with the sagittal plane, yeah. Because it's going through here and it's going to create flexion and extension movements. So again, if I was to put it through my shoulder, it would do that sort of movement as I rotate the pen. Yeah. Last one being longitudinal. Um, think about kebab skewer for this one. If you imagine you get the pen, you put it straight through the middle of your body. If you twist the pen, it's a little bit like a ballet dancer, but your body will twist and rotate, which is going to link in with the transverse plane. So let's recap then. We've got anterior, posterior, so front to back. That's going to produce side to side movements. We've got um, medial to lateral, which is going to be um, from middle to the, to the side, which is going to produce forward and backward, sort of flexion and extension movements, and we've got the longitudinal one as well. Uh, now, at the start of the session, um, I, I put up a, a bunch of muscles on the board. Now, if you feel like you want any more information with those in regards to the whereabouts, the breakdown, the origins and insertions, feel free to have a comment below and if possible we can maybe get up another video uh, going through each of those muscles just to give you a little bit more insight uh, to really help you out of your exams as well. Um, and that's everything covered for the level 3 muscular system today so thanks for joining guys and see you soon.